today's video, we're going to discuss brachioplasty and thigh lift. Brachioplasty, otherwise known as arm lift and thigh lift surgery, are typically performed in the same group of patients. These patients are often successful, significant weight loss patients. What unfortunately happens is when you lose a significant portion of your body weight, the skin elasticity has been exceeded and it does not spring back to its original shape. This is particularly the case if the weight loss is experienced after the age of about 30, but in some patients, even weight loss at a very young age can cause the same set of problems. Overall, what patients are left with is saggy, floppy skin that either hangs down between the elbow to the armpit, or in the case of the thighs, the skin tends to hang down below the underwear and can be uncomfortable when walking as the skin can rub together. It can cause chafing, but can also cause discomfort and hygiene problems. These patients often have a history of previous weight loss surgery, have had assistance in their weight loss, but in many cases, purely down to diet and exercise, leaving an unfortunate amount of excess skin. At your consultation, we will discuss the areas of your body which show excess skin. This isn't usually confined to the arms or thighs, but may also be associated with loss of shape of the abdomen, of the breasts, of the buttocks, or of the lower back. For the sake of this discussion, we shall concentrate only on arm lift and thigh lift surgery. The other areas of the body will be discussed in separate videos. And we will discuss your current weight, your maximum weight, and any weight loss techniques that you might have used to help you. Are you at a weight which not only are you comfortable with, but is something you can maintain into the future? Some people are happy a little overweight, but most people are not happy with the excess skin that comes with weight loss. Other things to consider are your job, your fitness activities, your family, and any exercise that you like to do. We will also discuss any medication that you take, any allergies that you have, any problems with scarring, either in yourself or in family members, any smoking history or nicotine use, as this is highly significant when it comes to surgery for excess arm or thigh skin. We will also talk about the surgery itself and the recovery. If you decide to go ahead with arm lift or thigh lift surgery, then this is almost always a procedure performed under general anesthetic. There are very minor cases where the scar for the arm lift can be maintained within the armpit, only to the groin, but again, this is beyond the remit of, of this particular video, as these are not classical examples of the surgery we're describing. For most patients, the excess skin goes from either the armpit towards the elbow or all the way to the elbow. In some cases, it also involves the tissue below the armpit to the side of the chest wall and towards the breast. The thigh skin excess can be localized just to the very top of the thigh, but it may also continue down towards the mid thigh and sometimes even towards the knee. And for all of these cases, the operation involves a general anesthetic, but this can usually be performed as a day case, meaning you go home the same day unless it's combined with other surgery. The excess skin of the arm or thigh will be marked, and then using a combination of liposuction to remove the fatty tissue around the excess skin, but also the fat underneath, and then excising the excess will be removed. The skin will be stitched together with dissolving stitches and then a waterproof dressing will be placed. Once awake, which typically takes between one and two hours following your surgery, you will be free to go home. For thigh lifts, we issue some kind of compression garment. This helps support the scar and also makes you feel more comfortable when moving around. Support garments for arm lift surgery are much harder to find and they're not typically as effective. And so we just suggest that you take it easy and don't do any activity which involves raising the arms above the head for 10 days or so. Similarly with thigh lifts, we strongly suggest that you don't do any unnecessary activity or exercise for between 10 and 14 days. 
there will be a moderate degree of discomfort as the skin will be a little tight in the early phases. This is to be expected and it's highly likely, unless you work from home at a desk, that you will need to take time off. If you have young children at home, you will certainly need help looking after them for the first 10 to 14 days after surgery. Your follow-up will typically involve a return visit to the hospital at day six or seven following your surgery. At this point, we will remove the dressings, which ideally will be the same ones that you were given when you left hospital. We will inspect the wounds and we will see how things are healing. At this point, it is highly likely that the skin will look crimped and wrinkled, somewhat like the top of a Cornish pasty. Please do not be concerned by this. Arm skin or thigh skin, which has been through a weight gain and weight loss cycle, is typically much thinner and in the early phases after surgery, it looks a little ruffled. These ruffles will soften and settle and the scars will fade over time, creating a typically thin line. Once the wounds are redressed, then you can go home and for the second week following surgery, you will find your activity levels can build up. If necessary, we can review you again at two weeks, but for most patients who have no complications, their next appointment will be at four weeks and during that time they will build up to normal activity and potentially can dispense with all dressings somewhere around the end of the second or third week. Activity will still be limited by tightness and stiffness of the scars, but you will start to feel your normal self. Unfortunately, these are two areas of the body that despite our best efforts in plastic surgery, tend not to heal perfectly or neatly first time. They are both notorious for creating raised, thick, lumpy scars. These are not necessarily keloid scars, but can be described as hypertrophic. What this means is they are full and raised and often pink or darkly pigmented in darker skin and require many months to settle. Additional treatments including steroid injections or silicone gel or sheet application can help speed up the recovery of these scars, but unfortunately it is a well-recognized problem of both of these procedures that the scars are not always neat and they're not always thin. A concern following arm lift or thigh lift surgery is that the result is not tight enough. Unfortunately, this is an inevitable byproduct of this type of surgery. Weight gain and subsequent weight loss has exceeded the skin elastic recoil. All we can do during surgery is remove as much skin as is safe and stitch it as tightly as we feel comfortable doing without creating additional tension. Additional tension in the wound creates ugly stretched scars, which is not something we want. By stitching the scars as tightly as we can without additional tension, this leaves us with skin that will inevitably subsequently relax. This is what leads tight arms and tight thighs to become looser over time. This is a guaranteed outcome from arm lift or thigh lift surgery and is something that has to be accepted. Especially with thigh lifts, infections are not uncommon. Wound breakdown where the scar does not heal perfectly first time, again, is not uncommon in both areas of the body. Typically, dressings, time, and occasionally antibiotics and specialist treatment are required to get the scars healed. And then once healed, the scars will slowly fade and improve. But as we mentioned, this scar process can be a two year cycle in many, many cases. Other things to be concerned about but are rare are things like keloid scarring. These can be disfiguring, lumpy, itchy, and quite uncomfortable. They're much more common in African and Mediterranean skin and the inner arms and inner thighs are not very common places for this phenomenon to occur. It is certainly something to bear in mind when considering arm lift or thigh lift surgery. Numbness inside the arm and a little bit of numbness around the scars of the thigh is again not uncommon. Arm lift and thigh lift surgery is specifically designed to remove the excess skin, it cannot be removed by exercise alone. It is not a weight loss tool and is very unlikely to create svelte tight arms or tight toned thighs.
The scars are well hidden in normal clothing, especially thigh lift scars. The longer the amount of excess tissue, the longer the scar will be. Arm lift scars are hard to see with the arms against the side of the body, but with the arms lifted sideways, then from behind you may well see the arm lift scars. If they haven't healed as a nice thin line, they may be visible by someone standing behind you. We will happily show you pictures of arm or thigh lift scars that have healed well. In contrast, we will show you scars of arm lift and thigh lift operations which have not healed well. And you have to accept both possible outcomes when considering either of these surgeries. Overall, if you have excess tissue at the top of your thighs which rubs together and causes you discomfort or inconvenience, similarly excess tissue that hangs down from the arms, then surgery is your only real option. Accepting the potentially prolonged recovery process, arm lift and thigh lift surgery has high levels of satisfaction. We would be happy to offer you a free consultation here at Adam Goodwin Surgery. By all means get in touch. Contact details are available at the end of the video.